Hello world, this is Budrich. It's a new episode of Let's Linux. I call this one Focus Window if Visible. Check this out, my new thing here. Um, there, I made a second polybar that displays the, yeah, whatever string I pass in here when I execute this. And then, then it also displays the last uh, uh, used uh, key binding in i3 and the command it, it executed. Yeah, I just thought it would be cool uh, to have that in the videos like this. In this video, uh, we will make a couple of scripts and fix a little annoyance that I have been having. Uh, you see here, this is MPV. I was watching Landuk here. Uh, really <laughs> weird stuff going on. Microsoft releasing Linux-based operating system. It's super strange. Uh, when I uh, exit MPV here now, then uh, it will focus uh, if there are more windows in the same container uh, that window will, will get focused and even if i didn't have a, a tabbed container uh, you might the focus might end up somewhere that you really don't want it to do and this is especially true when you're watching video and sometimes you know you watch uh, the videos um, full screen and then it's uh, even more um, apparent that, um, or even more, it, that, then you never know really where, where the focus ends up. So, and this has been the annoyance for me because my, my usually I, I download a lot of videos from YouTube like this and then I maybe just watch a little, a minute or two of it, close the video, and then I want to keep on browsing uh, videos in this, um, directory in in Thunar, but now the focus is here of course i can just focus down and and do this but sometimes it's not apparent and you start typing or something and uh, uh, especially the media player this is seamus by the way um, if that has focus then you might by accident st uh, enabling some ra uh, some strange modes like single play mode or random or even start the song when you didn't mean to so in this video, uh, this episode, focus window if visible, we will create two scripts um, to to give us the ability to fine tune this. So we will create a kind of a rule within our i3 listen script uh, that will do when MPV closes, if MPV is active and Thunar is visible, focus Thunar. So if those two rules are met, and they often are in my use case, but there are probably a lot more use cases than, than this for, for this functionality. And I haven't really seen it before, so I had to create it and now I have to share it because I'm a sharing person. Um, before I made this video, uh, I um, extended the functionality of my script i3 this with I will link uh, in the show notes uh, I have a demo video video about this um, but it basically gives you uh, the ability to focus around your layout in a good way without switching tabs just switching yeah it, it focus based on, on the visual representation of the windows it doesn't care about the, uh, the i3 tree so I, I, I think this is much better than the default uh, way of focusing, whatever. And you could, um, if you paid attention, you can watch the, the polybar at the bottom and see the different keys here I used to, to focus around. But if you uh, pass the P flag to i3 viz, viz then you get a list uh, of, um, of visible windows. And it looks like this the star it represents the active window so it's this one and then you have uh, the, the geometry here like the position and and the, and the, the dimension of, of each window but you, by default you only get get this you don't know which windows it is really and so i added this you can use c and then you will get the class name of the window at the end uh, as the last field here. And it also works with I for instance, T for title, and even O for title format if you 
uh, would ever need that. And when I added this, uh, I did it just to, to be able to make the scripts that I'm doing now in, in, in an easy way, because now we can very easily find out if, for example, Thuner is visible. We can just search for Thuner in, in this list and we, we will get can easily get the container ID, but we need to make a little script for it. So first let's start by making a script that we can call get visible. Because I have chosen to uh, divide this function focus visible into two, like one script that will only give us the container ID of, of the window if it finds it and, the, and focus visible will focus the window. Because I, I have found uh, uh, found it usable to have have them separated because sometimes you just want the window ID but you don't want to focus. Maybe you want to do some other action. Maybe you want to close the window if it's visible or whatever. So let's create this script. Get visible. Hmm. I thought I would get a... Whatever. Okay. Ah, now I know. Whatever, don't mind me. Um, here, we will need this uh, get up. So I I had it in my clipboard. Uh, I will explain really soon what why. We can comment it out first. So. The way I want this, uh, and this get visible, th this will take longer time to make than the get uh, focus visible. That will be really fast. So don't worry if you think that this video w will be really slow like this. But I have to I have to uh, explain a couple of things here so everyone is on the same page. Okay, this get visible, visible. it will run uh, i3 vis vis with either the C or the I flag to get the instance name. We can do it like this first. And then uh, first off to, to isolate the last field of the output here, we can pipe uh, the output to AWK and then do a print $NF. And NF that stands for number of fields, you know, with with AWK, if I would do print $2, it would print the second field here. $1 would be this field. And NF is equal to the number of fields. So this that would be, in this case, $1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, dollar twelve, I think. But uh, it's also a very good way, if you know that you want the last field, but you don't know how many fields there are, you can always use this and then it will only print the last uh, uh, field. So let's do get visible. And there, it only prints the last field, uh, the uh, which is the class name of each uh, visible window. It also prints these two first lines here, which are these two lines and they are kind of control uh, output for i3 with this here uh, to get rid of those two lines in the output we can use this tail and tail uh, if you if you do tail minus one here then it, it will only print the last line of the output like this and if we do three it would print the last three lines so of course we could do minus four here and we would get the uh, the windows but that will only work if there if if uh, there is four windows maybe uh, the output maybe the layout looks something like this and uh, then we, we don't get the the right result so you can inverse this kind of so instead of, of printing minus three if we print plus three then it will print from the bottom up to the first three lines. It will not include the first three lines. And I know for some reason it is three. It would be more logical if, if it were two, because you know the output, it's only two lines that we don't want, but I don't know if it counts this line break or something. So plus three here, that will give us uh, 
all, all of the output except the, the first two lines here. And it also works if, if we only have, for instance, two visible windows. Now the list will only contain two class names. Okay, so that's how we can isolate the, the, the class in this list. Um, this is like take two or maybe even take three of this video because I realized the first version I did was a bit over complicated and uh, I realized there is a, a, a smarter way to do it. Well, I don't have to explain that really for you, but uh, first off, we should make this uh, script, uh, make it possible for us to, to we want to uh, tell the script if we want class or instance name, and we also want to specify which window we are searching for. And we do this by using options. I use options a lot in my bash scripts. I think it's, uh, it's very very good to, to add that to your bash scripts then instead of having 10 scripts you can have one script with 10 options instead uh, so if we add here c and i you can look this up get opts maybe there's even a man page especially for get opts i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure now and then you add like this the uh, the name of each option which is a single uh, character so if the option is C, then we can do target is equal to class. And then you end each clause with a, a double semicolon. And if it's I, then target is equal to instance. Now if we run get visible, ah, also we should do this. Echo uh, target. Now it should print uh, uh, the target here. If we run it without any option, then we just get two blank lines. It doesn't target is empty. But if we run this now with dash c, it will print class here as a first line and i instance of course. And the way we will use this is to instead of hard coding the C here, we will use class C or I from, from target here instead. So we actually only need the first character, which happens to be the same as the option. And when it is, we could write it like this, option. And now if I run here, dash I, it prints instance. If I run with dash C, it prints the option name, which is C. So it is the same, uh, we do the same thing for both C and I here. So then we could do this and remove this line. I'm just showing you some tricks here. Uh, so you can write more compact and cool scripts. So C prints C, I prints I. And then we can use this target variable as the option here. And this is also good to know how you can pass uh, one option from one script to another. It, it, it's very useful. So now I prints the instance, C prints the options. But then we also wanted to be able to pass in uh, a search uh, uh, criteria. For instance, I, I would like to search for urxvt and uh, have the command look like this. Um, then we can do that in different ways here, but I think this is the easiest one, or maybe it isn't, but we do it like this today. If you add a colon after the options here, then uh, you are required to specify uh, a name, or you are required to specify a, a, an argument to the option. And this is the argument, this is the option. And you can access the argument with the built-in arg uh, variable. Um, let's do this. Arg is equal to the built-in uh, variable is called opt arg. And then we can do that instead here. Arg. Now we should print urxvt at the top here, and we could whatever here. Pa 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 poopa. Print that. 
Okay, we're getting somewhere. And what we, uh, this script, the result we really want is it to print the, the, uh, the second field, field. You remember the, the con IDs. We want the one that rep, uh, corresponds to our search here. Uh, so I think this is the best way to do this. We, we add this argument into AWK here. So we can use that uh, 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 variable and its value inside our, our little AWK script. And it's very easy to do so. You just specify a V to, to pass in, to create a variable inside AWK here. And you can call that, we can call it whatever here. Let's call it argument is equal to arg. We can put the arg in quotes if we want to like this. And then if we wanted to, I, I usually do something like this. Or you know what, we do this instead. And then awk becomes like a, yeah, whatever. And we want to print dollar two if uh, nf is equal to argument. And you, you, we can just write it like this. Actually, AWK is is such a cool language in, in my opinion. You can write so dirty scripts, and it just works. And I think this will actually be enough. And now we don't need this tail statement. And what we also will do here is when it find this match, it will exit the AWK statement and it will just print the first found since, you know, we had multiple URXVTs for instance here. And now if we search here for get visible URXVT, it prints uh, one of those here. We can remove these echoes. There. And if we would print it with a lowercase u, it will not find it because it's case sensitive. It looks for an exact match. This could be uh, fixed, but let's leave it like this for now. And also, I think I will do this. So we don't need that extra line there. Whatever. Okay. Um, in one way, this this uh, script is uh, is fine. Uh, yeah, let's leave it here. I thought we could add this exit codes and stuff, but uh, I don't want to do that right now. It, uh, this is okay. And now it's just one single line, this, this script, and, and that's kind of cool. Well, I have divided a single, but this could be on one line. But in one way, all bash scripts could be written in one line. Okay, um, get visible part is done. Let's uh, do the focus visible part and this will be much quicker. F8 bash focus visible. Um, and here we will use the same options as we had here. It will be almost the same script and that it might look weird and in one way maybe you think I, I just said that instead of having 10 different scripts have 10, 10 options but this is one of the cases when I think it's it's better to separate this because sometimes you just want this get visible and it's it's a good name also you know uh, what was it no yeah whatever whatever um, and here we create a variable called con id that is equal to the output of our get visible and here we pass in just exactly the same as we did or not exactly but we want to we want the command to look something like this so it will be c is equal to target the argument is equal to arg And then you can check if uh, 
con ID if it if it contains a value which uh, this n flag stands for in a test, uh, then we want to i3 message q to make a quiet to make a quiet output con id underscore con underscore id is equal to con id focus that window and exit the script if it doesn't uh, uh, if it is empty con id then we exit the script with a exit one exit status maybe we should do this it would be cleaner said because this means this now this test will be true if con id is empty and if it is exit one because you should exit fast or uh, how they say it now if we run this your xvt this is a bad ex example we should let's list the windows with i3 this with dash i instead and here we see we can take uh, cmos so now if i if i run this focus visible uh, dash i cmos then it will uh, pass in here i option and arg will be cmos then it will execute get visible with i option and cmos as argument i know arguments here, here, here. it will search for that here with this and uh, print the the window id if it finds it if it finds it then this will never happen because this will be false because this will contain a value and then it will focus uh, this con id and we could even remove the exit here now since it will exit anyways it's the last line so let's see if it works yeah that's it that's how we create the focus visible now we just have to add these rules to our listener script i was using this before so I um, just need to comment these lines out. And what it does is inside the window notify function here, it will see if uh, event change is close, meaning every time a window closes, then it will go in here. And then it will see if the, if the window that was closed was MPV. It will also see if, if that window had focus when it was closed, if that is true then it will call our focus visible with c thuner here and focus thuner if if it is visible so let's try it out let's go to my own folder here and see uh, or we can just close it with f4 here Ah, I also need to reload my listener script. PBR is my polybar restart script. It's nothing special. It's also it also restarts uh, my listener scripts. So now if I uh, MPV is active, if I exit MPV, it focuses Thunar. Uh, but if uh, mpv is exited while i'm in a different window for example uh, sublime here then it should not focus thuner just normal do what's yeah the normal thing which is keep the focus in sublime here hopefully if everything works and as you can see i also had this where i could uncomment these as well yeah and you see the focus stayed in sublime when the wind uh, video uh, was done I also have it for SXIV the same thing if I would close uh, SXIV it will return to Thunar if it's open because I most likely opened the image from there okay um, I hope uh, I didn't confuse you too much but it's not uh, this uh, um, program it isn't that the weird in my opinion maybe this is nicer yeah 
Just one short one-liner here now with i3 vis vis with the options. It's uh, before I added this so you could search i3 vis vis. Then I didn't have this last field. Then I had to loop this list uh, each element here with i3 get and get the title or, or get the class or instance from that and compare that it. It got a lot, uh, not a lot, I was still under uh, 60, 80, maybe 100 milliseconds if I had a lot of windows. But now we're down to like 30, 40 here to focus visible. It's uh, it, it's pretty good. Um, and just a couple of lines like this. And it's usable, usable for all kinds of things. Now you can just search for a visible window like this. I say thank you for watching. Oh, you know what? Let's add this. Let's let's add it. It 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 annoys me because, um, yeah, I think we need to do this. We put this output found in a variable. I'm now in get visible uh, script here. Oops. Put it in quotes. And then we see if uh, the output, if we didn't find any window, the found variable is empty, then we exit one, else we echo uh, found. Maybe this costs us two, three milliseconds. But um, focus with uh, actually it, it executed faster this time. But whatever, it it costs nothing. But now we we get a, a exit one code here, and that means that you can use this script as a boolean and just run the script. It get visible itself by itself inside a found without uh, storing the value in a variable and stuff. Stuff. It's really nice. Um, I say thank you for watching. In the next episode, we will look into MPD, uh, but this or CMOS or music players. I will talk a bit about music players. Why I have chosen to just start using CMOS here, uh, uh, but we will look into how to have a title like I have here. This displays the the currently or the last played uh, for now. Uh, audio file in CMOS here but when I open a video uh, it changes the title to the video title when I close the video it goes back to the the media title because I have found a way to to see which media player is active and this is also the, it's something similar in one way by knowing which media player is active, I can use the same key bindings. For example, I want to toggle, I want to play the music, then I hit one key. But if MPV is active, then it will instead toggle play and pause in MPV. It will know which media player to activate, meaning I can have the same key bindings for multiple media players and that is really really cool and you can do things like this also this uh, dynamic title here i will show you all that in the next video maybe it will be two videos we'll see but it's 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 cool stuff i hope i hope i see you in those videos and i say thank you so much for watching my name is budrich this is let's linux tell your friends Hit like, hit subscribe, have a good day, bye bye.